Namaskar. Namaskaram. Clement. Clement. Yes. I uh, <coughs> have two, que two questions. One is about uh, how to get more established in this silent nothingness. And second is about the unity consciousness. With my experiences, uh, I can be this selfless, present, vibrant, or get lost in the mind. Um, and Muji said yesterday something that liberated me to a bigger extent. He said that the mind is not real. In the first, for the first time I realized since the mind is not real then the bondage is not real and the attachment is not real. And because of that I am free. So, but this realization now is for the first time I can really be free. Though there are some impurities in my thinking or uh, this long term anxiety still lurking, maybe. So, my question, first question is how to get really deeper, be that silence, selfless. Clayman, I'll have to tell you that I'm going to disappoint you very much. If you're ready to be disappointed, then I can answer the question. I'm ready to be disappointed. Okay. Maybe it's one of those impurities which you'll have to deal with then. So, the idea that I am the silent emptiness, identifying with that silent emptiness, is a conceptual exercise, firstly. So you're, you're thinking that you are identifying with the silent emptiness. Now, that is already assuming that the, that the presence, the living presence, is emptiness. So, Tell me if you get bored, <laughs> because no, no. I, I'm, I'm starting. I haven't even begun yet. That's why. <laughs> just, just one thing, maybe. I, when I'm in that state, there is no I, so there is mm. no I. So I, maybe I misexpress myself. There is no I because there is identification with that presence. That's why there is no I. It is a dissolution of identity that happens. The thing is that it is a conceptual dissolution of identity, because you still have the body to deal with, you know. And the moment the body is shaken enough, the eye starts to appear. For example, if you have sudden pain, suddenly the eye is very much there. And which is why I say that any practice that takes you into a dissolution of identity and an identification with this living presence is a practice that is, in a sense, saying you are the soul, you are the presence. It's an experience that you reach through a practice, right? What I'm saying is that that very practice that is taking you to that experience is conceptual in nature, and the experience, therefore, is conceptual, which means that at one point, when this starts to make its presence felt, you fall from that experience. And the result is just, you know, the, the elation that you have when you have that feeling of freedom is replaced by the opposite, which is a feeling of imprisonment by the body. It's just this up and down yo-yo that goes on pretty much through a lifetime. What is clearly said over here, and that's why I said I may disappoint you, is that any experience that takes you into an identification with soul, with where you actually lose the identity, but you lose it through identification with soul and not through surrender, 
because you're not surrendering to something. You are just there and you feel that all of this that is happening is, is an illusion, actually. So you start to detach. And you, you arrive at a freedom because you've detached from all of these things happening around you. That is your experience of freedom. But the fact of the matter is, it's only a conceptual experience because the body itself is not free of those things. And a lot of the time, the pain that is created is created by the body itself, by you. Now, in this practice here, it's diametrically opposite. It's you're very much taking on the responsibility for everything happening around. What you say is, I claim and I'm this, and I am the servant or the, the instrument of the soul, of the antaratman, of the individualized soul. I am not the soul. The soul is not the observer here. I am not the observer, I'm only simply in surrender. It doesn't end there. There is also very clearly, it's very down to earth, it's very present, and it's taking on the responsibility of the karmas of the system, the actions that you take, getting up and sitting here, getting up and sitting down, speaking, not speak, every single action is actually taken on as a responsibility of claimants. And he decides if that action of his arises from the truth, from the truth, the soul, the, the individualized Atman, or it arises from ego. And based on that discernment, he acts and acts and acts. And as he does and does and does, the joy grows when he does from the truth, and the suffering grows when he does from the ego. So what happens then is that because of this process of discernment, all actions arising from this body are actions that you take responsibility for. So you also take responsibility for the joy or the suffering. And if that's the case, by detaching from that suffering, you would not transform it. But by understanding that it arises out of the ego, you shift the gaze to the soul and act from that. What happens then is that there is an expansion of consciousness because there is surrender in the system. Surrender means bending down. You are the master, you are the soul, I am your servant. This is an instrument. So you experience sweet surrender because there is a you, there is an I that is experiencing that surrender. And in the process of this surrendering, bending down to the impulse of the Truth, the consciousness starts to expand, but it expands within the system. Which means that it's not a claimant who is suddenly no more a claimant. A claimant? Claimant is your name, right? Claimant. Claimant. But it is a claimant who is a claimant who isn't surrendered to that. He is not that, but he is in surrender to that. So what happens then? The consciousness starts to expand within the system. It's not a dissolution of identity. Because what you are experiencing now is a dissolution of identity. There is no I. If there is a dissolution of identity, it means there is a detachment from the system. It has to be, because the system is identity. So then what happens is the consciousness starts to expand within the system. So all the layers, the very cellular consciousness, the emotional part of the being, the conceptual, the transformative, all these different layers of consciousness start to actually become more conscious of themselves, more aware, more aware. So the, the, the materiality assumes more contour, the emotions become deeper, wider, and you become more the master of the emotions rather than the victim. The thoughts become clearer, more precise, 
the experience of creativity is just multiplied a thousand times over because it's expanding consciousness in there. The ability to be in unity consciousness moves... the whole system becomes able to do that at choice, at will. So it is an opposite process. It's a process of thisness, being here, this. The thing is that that experience of freedom which you have when you suddenly feel, I am not all of this, you will not have because there will be no need to experience freedom. There's nothing to be free from, this is this. So this in a nutshell is what I wanted to describe which was why I said you may be disappointed with my answer, but you can go ahead if you have something to... Oh, I'm thankful for the answer. I'd just like to clarify this state that you say it's like a projection or dissolution of the self. So what, what is it if I just... There is no I, there is just some... nothingness. So what, what that means it? is in that moment you have undertaken a practice which has put the system in an alarm state. It's a conceptual querying that has happened that has led to that state. Who am I, for example, or I am not this, I am not that, I am not this. Those are conceptual querying practices. What happens is that at one point the thinking is so overloaded with that practice that the consciousness leaves the system and the first thing you experience is that all this is not me. This is... it's a conceptual illusion. Rather, it's actually a conceptual welcoming to a larger and larger ego state because when there is no... when the I falls away without surrender the system is gearing itself for a fall back into the I-ness or thisness, And that's when the depressions come, the problems come, which you see with a lot of people who are practicing these particular practices which are largely devoid of surrender except the surrender to the Guru. See, the actual surrender is the surrender to the Soul. That is the Antar Guru, the final destination. The outer guru is not the final destination. So if surrender to the outer guru is maintained as an exercise of surrender, it will only lead to the person at one point falling from that false experience of freedom because there is no freedom. Finally, the body is here. You have to come back to it. All the greatest masters had to do that, whether it was Ramana Maharshi or uh, Sri Aurobindo, Ramakrishna Paramahansa, Ananda Mai, Ma, you can name them all. They had... they went into the enlightenment states of dissolution of identity and at one point the body called them down again. They had to get back into this and most of the time they were not capable of really reintegrating entirely because they had been too long, too far gone. So the self-realization process is very difficult then because the self-realization process is actually the surrender to self, not the identification with self, but the surrender, the bending down the actual material, physical surrender, the emotional surrender, conceptual surrender and so on. It's a bending down, it's a way of saying, I'm the instrument. It's taking on I-ness, identity, but as the instrument. So gradually what happens, that I will... Fall. so it'll be with I claimants, I'm your instrument, I love you, I'm your servant. Then at one point it's claimants is the instrument and then the instrument and then instrument and then doing from the Truth. This ego state of identification or loss of I-ness does not appear at all because the surrender is continuing and in every moment. 
So if you are in that state now and you have taken up practices to take you to that state, for sure, and I'm not cursing you, but I know because I've seen, I think, thousands of people by now who have been out there and have to come back down and it's very painful because there is no surrender in that wow. process. Hmm? Definitely don't want to experience that again. So stay here. The right way for me is to surrender myself as an instrument of the Divine yes. and remind myself at all times. Yes. And discern. So if you are there in the state of, you know, you're walking on the Ganga and you're, all this is not me, my pain is not me, my suffering is not me, what freedom! This is a illusion, it's the ego that is telling you this. Who is the one who's suffering? You are suffering and you can reduce that suffering if you take up the surrender to the soul and you start to discern this action of mine. Is it coming from the truth or is it coming from the ahankar, the ego? And each action, to start with major actions, then later on minor actions, you start to become aware of that then that fall cannot happen because you are aware of what you are doing. If you are in a state where you don't connect with the pain, you will continue to cause the pain to yourself because you are not connecting with it. And at one point, when the fall comes, and I mean the fall in the sense that the, the dissolution of identity which has happened will revert because finally you are not a soul flying around. You are this and you'll have to deal with this and when you have to deal with this then all that illusion of freedom will fall away and the pain is very extreme and it happens to practically everyone. And the reason it happens is that fundamentally those practices are ego practices. And I know that people say, well, but Ramana gave this and this one gave that. He did not give those practices. There was an entire atmosphere of surrender in which these gurus taught, you know. And so, that surrender posture is an absolute fundamental must. Every single person who takes up those practices goes into such kinds of depression because that freedom is lost, I mean when you lose the freedom and you realize that oops, I am this this is hurting very badly when it's physical pain from which you cannot detach anymore or it's emotional pain which is so extreme that you can't detach from it anymore that's when the fall comes and you realize that that freedom was actually a conceptual creation and the freedom need is only there because the pain is not transformed. When you transform it, how do you transform it? You transform it by taking the bull by the horns and saying, okay, this is a situation which needs... which I can't detach from but which I have to uh, accept as an experience of... of this and I transform it by continually and increasingly bending down and surrender to the soul and trying to listen so my actions won't create more pain to this system as my life moves on. And that makes you the master of the being. Just a last question. Since I have surrendered a thousand times, this, your answer might help somebody else too. So how? Do we surrender the right way? I feel that it's a growing thing, it's like building a muscle, you know, you start even... The, so, firstly, even the idea that surrender is the, the posture and not this conceptual elation journey or trip, you know, even that first needs to sink into your system that you even realize because you've been on a very different path 
This is not the same thing, it's very different because it's very real and it's a tough practice because you have to be very present. So even just pulling yourself to this moment, here and now, even just that is a very big step towards surrender. And the, the, this moment is not you as the, as the one without identity, no I, simply observing the thoughts and observing the actions and observing the pain and observing all of that. No, it is, it is this that is continuously aware of the Divine Presence within. Remember, you come from a culture which is strongly influenced by the Abrahamic religions which also then leaves a sort of a fear barrier and your idea of soul is, as you yourself said before, you, you want to experience the emptiness. But there's no emptiness to experience because it's fullness your cultural imprint, your genetic inheritance has convinced you that your connection has to be with emptiness, if at all because the other thing that is out there is God or Jesus so if you go inward it can only be emptiness but it's not emptiness it's fullness that fullness is what you're going to have to connect with and in order to do that, you have to pierce through a very well-established barrier of fear which has been instilled in you through the ancestral inheritances for 1,500 years or more. It's very easy for many people to take up practices where they can nicely say that I'm not this, I'm not that and they float along the Ganga up and down six inches above the ground but at one point the landing happens and then it's very painful because life has passed you by also in that time whereas if you're really present and really here and now in a state of surrender, you know, really in a state of surrender to the soul gradually the joy increases in this life and there is pain and there is suffering but it is not growing, it is reducing. So the surrender posture comes as you pierce through that barrier of fear which you particularly have as a genetic inheritance and you pierce through, you are, no, it is fullness, it is fullness. There is nothing to be afraid of when I go inward, it is fullness, it is there the Soul, the Supreme Soul it's a material presence, a material presence, a material presence it is not emptiness this is a inheritance of religion that says it is emptiness because then you have to connect with God which religion has actually taken out of you and placed somewhere as the mediator so basically you're pulling that back into yourself and you're moving into a state of surrender and till the last breath in your body that is the posture which will increase the joy and there will be no fall because it's a bottom-up process it's just growing, growing, growing <coughs> growing in surrender, growing in surrender, growing in surrender I do not support in any way any practice which moves too much into the line of self-inquiry conceptually I've seen that it just leads people to a lot of suffering a lot of detachment from what is actually happening around and into a false sense of freedom which at one point is rudely taken away <laughs>